In our day-to-day -day lives, we are surrounded by contextual cues. The websites we visit, the files and applications we open, the music that is playing, meetings, phone calls, tweets. And as we try to retrieve a piece of information from our past, human memory leverages these contextual cues for recall. What was that PDF I was looking at yesterday? The name escapes me, but I know that ACDC was playing when I was reading it. Or, I know that I read it during that meeting last week. What was its name? All users have had moments like this, yet modern computer systems do not support this type of contextual search. To leverage the natural functioning of human recall, computer systems should allow users to search for information based on the context surrounding their target file, website, etc. In many cases, these contextual cues are not semantically related. To address this need, we present UPivot. UPivot is a novel approach to personal file and activity search. In this video, we will highlight some of the key functionality of UPivot. Aaron is a researcher in psychology working on a major paper on school children. As he is writing, he remembers that he stumbled on some websites the other day that had great quotes that would add to his paper. Aaron can't remember the website's name, domain, nor any pertinent information about it. Traditional search can't help him. If Aaron had lost his car keys, he would think, where was I when I last had them? With UPivot, Aaron can ask the same thing of his digital items. Where did I last see that website? During my phone call with Frank. Yeah, I just need to see what things I was doing during that phone call. Aaron starts typing phone into his UPivot search field and quickly finds the meeting with Frank on September 10th, and upon hovering, clicks the pivot button. Aaron now can see all the files, websites, and other activity that was going on during that meeting. The first thing that Aaron notices is some high importance activity in his visualization. He hovers over it and sees that it relates to YouTube. Specifically, it is a video on empathy. That's right! He realizes. Frank wanted him to talk more about empathy in his research. Aaron can easily see that the YouTube video he located was opened only a few minutes after the meeting with Frank started. As Aaron looks more, he now sees other websites about that topic. To his surprise, Aaron also discovers a Word document entitled Our Meeting Notes. Aaron forgot that after the phone call ended, he jotted down some key notes from his conversation with Frank. To make sure he didn't miss anything, Aaron browses to the left and right of his phone call with Frank using the 24-hour visualization. He resizes the selection area, but sees too much activity. To help him filter down his results, he notices that the key terms children and empathy show up quite high. He then clicks on the keywords to apply them as a filter on his data. He also wants to see any search queries he did, so adds Google to his list of active filters by using the source icon. Aaron wants to make sure he doesn't forget all of the files and websites he just found and now has open. As a reminder to himself, he makes a time mark so that he can pivot on it later. Now, whenever he searches for this time mark and pivots, he will see all the files and sites that are active. UPivot allows Aaron to find websites and local files based on the contextual cues of his phone call meeting with Frank, even though the websites and calendar entry have no semantic relationship. This video only highlights a few of UPivot's features.